and welcome to What's Next Wall Street. I am George Alfredis. And I'm A.A. Ron, Dave Matthews. <laughs> and this is a show about stocks, crypto, and the new decentralized financial Web3 world around us. All right, so I've got details on all the hot new trending products that everybody's talking about using and investing in. And today, I'm giving you a little history lesson on the Renaissance and West Coast hip hop and remixing it. With NFTs, it's nothing but a G thing, babe. Mm -hmm. I get it's in Georgia, not gangster. Ah, uh, that's yeah. funny. And I'm back from the tech rodeo in Houston, Texas, and I'm going to talk about yeah. how you can cut your cellular phone bill in half or more by using prepaid instead of postpaid cellular services. I like that. All with the same quality of service as one of your big three character carriers. Now, remember when there were four carriers? Yeah. Ugh. Crazy. Okay, so we got Greg Krause, lead instructor at optionsplayers.com. As our expert, Greg charts a lot of these companies, and those chart indicators can show where a particular stock is headed so that it's easier to target investment potential. So Greg combines technical analysis with fundamental knowledge. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, our goal is to help you become a more informed trader with a tailored trade plan so that you can stay up to speed with what's next on Wall Street and stack some financial gains. Yes, you can email us at optionsplayers.com or hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street with your questions. We can also direct you to instructors and experts over at optionsplayers.com who dig into trading fundamentals. Yes, sirs. We used to have to wait for government images of space, but there are now more privately owned sensors in space than ever before. Hello, SpaceX. Mm. They're the ones that get them there. Yeah. Now, a lot of these privately owned companies are like Black Sky, Planet Labs, Maxar Capella Space, and others have been sharing high-resolution data of the ongoing conflict in Russia and Ukraine. Now, this is a humanitarian crisis, and people around the world are able to see it like they never have before in real time, which is insane. Yeah, right, Dave. Not only did we have to wait for government images, but we also had to wait to see those images on our local TV news shows. But now the world can see these images in real time because of social media. Uh, I mean, like Twitter or Telegram channels. Look at this image. Virginia-based company Black Sky tweeted. For those of you listening to the podcast, check it out on YouTube when you get a moment. Uh, as Dave said, first and foremost, this is a humanitarian disaster. Now, with that said... Um, I want to ask you, Greg, because I'd really like to invest in companies that help keep an eye on the world, especially these days. I know we're all immensely proud these days to be a part of our tribe, whatever that tribe might be, political, racial, country, whatever. But we are so much more globally connected now because of social media and everything else. Is it a good time to invest in satellite imagery based companies? Well, I think... Um, well, you can't invest in SpaceX uh, because it's privately held. Um, but I guess in a way you could. Uh, I think Alphabet still owns a small percentage of SpaceX, so that's one way that you could invest in it. Um, other satellite builders and such like that, uh, there's so many out there. Uh, even Google doesn't have their own satellites. They basically rent from other satellite providers. I think it's a weird one that that is a sector that is extremely difficult to know and i wouldn't want to say hey invest in this company or that company because there's just they just no company goes hey i just build satellites okay that's just uh, they're always connected with governments or they're building planes or things like that also um so it's it's a it's a it's a it's a change there so would i go after companies selling um pictures not really, because I think SpaceX, who now has more satellites in space than anyone else, is going to probably has the newer satellites. They're low orbit, so they're going to be closer to the Earth, probably take better photos. And he already has probably like 3,000 of them. I think last time I looked, it was like 2,000, 2,804. But, you know, even 3,000 satellites more than everybody else. And He's in low orbit, so he could take better photos, and we can't invest in that company just yet. Now, Greg, um, specifically answer this. When you were in the military, you had access to some imagery as well. Can you specifically tell us what, <laughs> what you had yeah. access to? Well, I can't tell you exactly what satellites or anything like that. Uh, you know, I just ask a person that deals with that uh, as part of the commos, satellite tech. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good, clear imagery. Um, it wasn't like what you see, or at least for me when I was in an operations center, it wasn't like, hey, can I get a flyover? And it's like live, you know, thing. It's like, can I have imagery or ISR over this area? And then, you know, they give me a packet that had pictures. Uh, now, if you may be cooler than me, you might have got that satellite, but I didn't get that. Uh, you know, if I wanted it, normally I'd have to get a plane or something up there to go up there and fly and send me some feed. Cool. Actually, very cool. Hey, thank you for your service, yeah. by the way. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Now, when the market is correcting as it is now, we suggest you research and plan for optimal entries in the plays you feel were brought down with the market as a whole and are still looking strong into 2023. There are the first plays that will recover and will generally bring great returns on the bounce. There are many attractive plays out there, so take your time and plan accordingly because in life, patience paid. Okay, this is the part of the show where we get to hear from you. You can, of course, hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street, comment on our YouTube page, or email us at www.optionsplayers.com. Is this your favorite part of the show? This is my favorite part of the show. Because you get to hear from I'm them? I'm so excited, yes. Scott Epp from optionsplayers.com asks, with all the COVID-19 restrictions being lifted and travel numbers improving, why is BA hitting new 52-week lows? Now, the fear of war should benefit BA as well as since they provide military aircraft ba boeing aircraft greg tell what us say? what you know yeah i think uh we kind of answered this one last week uh when we were talking about jets a little bit um first off why do i think uh the airplane sector market is going down uh, let's just say uh in general that includes airlines and uh manufacturers um first it's supply and demand there airlines aren't doing good manufacturers aren't gonna do good but the airline's problem is fuel cost, mm. okay? Um, you know, if you sell a hamburger at $10 and the meat costs you $9, you're not making any money. Mm -hmm. And these planes are ordering this fuel, or these airlines are ordering this fuel well in advance. Um, a lot of them try to hedge when it's cheaper and buy futures, things like that. I'm not going to get into that, but none of them really know exactly. So it's not an exact science. And then you're talking oil goes almost 100% in a year, they're eating that. Uh, so of course they charge you more, but there's still a lot of stuff that goes on. Uh, airlines do get subsidies because um, they have to fly into smaller cities. It's required by law. And there's a bunch of stuff I don't really understand regulation wise in that, but um, airlines do not do good when fuel costs are up. And mainly the largest uh, variable cost for an airline is fuel. Uh, so fuel costs a lot, you don't make profit. So that's, that's it. Stock goes down. So it's people think fuels up, it's going to cause the airlines to lose money. So they don't buy as much on the airlines. You know, Greg, Simple my gut that. tells me that BA would be one to buy now while it's low because of this, this blew my mind. So the UK had COVID restrictions. You had to be vaccinated to travel there. So my friends that were going back and forth between Canada and Britain or the U S and Britain, they got vaccinated early. They were traveling through the lines to, for the vaxxed. Now the UK has dropped those COVID vaccination restrictions. And even my friends that are vaccinated are going into the country through the non-vaccinated lines because they're much shorter. And the UK used to call and make sure you quarantine and go through all this rigmarole if you were unvaxxed. But now they quit doing all that as well. So this just proves that we are in endemic versus pandemic and I think those airplanes are going to start filling up as people scramble to get to Europe during the summer breaks and maybe not spring breaks, but it's the summer breaks that are coming up. So I sure. think it's a good time to buy. Hey, our next question comes from Jim in Plano, Texas. Where, Plano? Where's Plano? <laughs> Just kidding. He asks, how quickly can U.S. oil producers get up and running to take advantage of these prices and grab market share? Am I too late to make a play on oil? What say you, Greg? Uh, so what we're talking about is it's 100% the best example where I used to teach an economics class of supply and demand, um, because you actually see this happen every couple of years, the rig count. What, when, I'm, when I'm talking rig count, I mean a platform 
or something that's drilling oil, okay, it's what we call a rig, um, goes up. And it's not, don't, I, 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 we're not getting political here, but politicians can have a say and whatnot, but normally it's all about the money. It costs, oil has to be a certain, above a certain amount for certain types of drilling to be profitable in the United States. So as oil gets more expensive, what happens? More we people get into the play. We spend more money to get it. As a company, like say I have $100 million laying around and oil is now at all time high. What am I going to do with my $100 million? I'm going to go make, get me an oil rig and make a fortune real quick. And that's exactly what it is. Supply and demand. Um, we need it or, you know, we the demand outweighs the supply. So rig count is going to go up. Uh, I don't have a chart in front of me, although I did look at it not long ago. Um, you know, it, we were sitting quite high uh, before the pandemic, um, somewhere around 700 to 800 rigs. And then the pandemic hit. So supply just dropped off. Right. Do you remember that oil was nothing to do with gas prices. Oil went just, upside down in 2020, Greg. They were the oil producers were paying thirty dollars for people to take the oil, and they yeah. said that's because there was nowhere to store all the oil because production was so high in 2019. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So it just dumped it, and the price was just it was flat. But then now we have what's going on here, right? But oil's been a little bit going up. Um, and a little bit. It's up. <laughs> it's up a lot. One ton of barrel but is so has the old this. rigs. So the old rigs have gone from about 300, which is like when oil's not great and it's just bottom price. Oil rigs about 300 in the United States. This is not globally, but it's it's about the same everywhere. So as prices have gone up, we went from 350 to probably probably close to double that in a very short period of time. And you will see gaining more and more every month until the price comes down. Greg, what do you mean um, so, the 300 versus, I thought it was 112 bucks a barrel, 110 a barrel. What do you mean by 300? Well, I'm saying rig count. How many oh, rigs number of rigs. Got pumping it. Uh, oil out? Okay, so we went okay. from a high of 800 some odd rigs in 2019 when everything was yep. rolling in the and before it, times. Yeah, to down to 300 half of probably, that. just stabilized. And then now we're back, I'd have to look it up, but it's probably 500, 600. But those are rigs that were ready to go. Uh, to, but the thing is, people think it takes a long. You ever see a real uh, oil rig? Now, in Texas, you can drive down the highway and you can see them out there pumping. But if you ever go offshore or anything and you see one of these massive cities and you're like, man, they must take a long time to set up. No, a month to three months, depending on exactly what they're drilling for, how long it is, what they're drilling through. So as prices going up, I promise you, every major oil person is out there just slinging whatever drills they have everywhere to pump this out and sell it at $100 a barrel. Uh, mm. And then when it goes back down, they'll just pull the rig and take it somewhere and not use it. Uh, I got to tell so, you, being in Houston last week during the, uh, the, the rodeo and the tech rodeo, yeah, Houston was on fire. People were throwing money left and right. I've never seen so many gemstones on shirts. So wow. many be bedazzled uh, boots. It was insane. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay, thank you, Greg. If you've got a question, we can answer it or we'll find somebody else who can. So hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street in the comment section on our YouTube page or email us at www.optionsplayers.com with your questions. So Georgia, a year ahead of the before times, you know, of COVID. Oh, okay. I got tired of paying 115 bucks or so on my cellular phone bill. Plus, my iPhone payment was on that as well, and I wanted to find a better way. Okay. And this is the trick, this payment plan that the carriers use to lock you into plans. They want you to make payments on your phone for two years and keep you on their dole. Well, when my phone was paid off, I decided to make the switch. Well, it turns out that AT&T, which worked best in my town, had a plan that allowed you to prepay for an entire year for 300 bucks. Come on. Mm -hmm. That gave you unlimited voice and text, which doesn't really matter that much with iMessage. 
But best of all, it includes roaming in Mexico and Canada. Hold on, hold on. I got to ask you this because I used to have that plan too, but I couldn't talk before between like 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. I couldn't make calls and it cost oh me like a million dollars. All right. For you Gen Zers, what she's talking about is back in the 90s, you could only talk on your cell phone for free yes. from like 7 or 8 p.m. at night <laughs> until like 7 a.m. the next morning. Yes. And that's because the cell phone networks were charging for voice calls. They were making tons Teachers. of money on that. But, I mean, who talks on the phone anymore? I know, right? Right. So, one of the countries, Mexico, allowed us to come during the COVID times, and the other didn't let us travel to them at all, which caused a huge trucker bottleneck in their capital. Well, you can roam with this plan in both of those countries. Okay. Now, with my yearly cellular plan, you only get 8 gigs of data per month and no 5G, which, by the way, 5G doesn't really work that well now. Anyway, so... This means it's not going to cut it for you if you stream music or movies when you're out and about. For me, downloading music over Wi-Fi at home and then playing it on the go when I want to, that's just fine for me. Yeah. When it comes to data, and I'm a heavy user, I hit my 8 gig limitation not even half of the year. If you use less than 8 gig in a month, they have a data rollover process where they give you the data you didn't use for that month in the next month. So that's kind of cool. So if you're a heavy user, AT&T does offer a $50 per month prepaid plan, which gives automatic payments for unlimited data. And that's per line. So that may be better for you streamers. Oh, and that supports 5G phones as well. Okay. However, if you have a family plan or you already may be saving a bit with some carriers that let you have add-on users. I don't know. Do you have a family plan? I have a family plan. You but my bill's is? like $500 a month. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. like, I don't even, and then I keep getting like emails or texts going, hey, somebody's using too much. It's like an extra 20 bucks. Uh, Literally like every other day, I want to kill my kids. And that's my bill because my husband says, I'm the one who, with all the stuff. So you might be better to pay for this $50 per user. That way, what's cool about that plan is you don't need to pay up for the entire year. You can just run that out month by month. So wait, you're saying... The fifty dollars, it'd be a fifty dollars. It's still cheaper than the five hundred or so dollars a month I pay. I think so, and this is the carrier's trick on you. Okay. So this is why I vastly prefer the carrier's prepaid plans instead of some of the other carriers that are the what's called MVNO, mobile network virtual operators. It's because those services get deprioritized data on the networks they lease out. When you're on the real deal networks, they run at full speed with the postpaid users, which is $115 plans. So okay. I'm not throttled at all. And the iPhone features like visual voicemail still work, but really who leaves voicemail any longer? I mean, really? I Nobody. I always hated checking Nobody. that anyway. <laughs> okay, if you're a frugal life hacker, you can also do another trick to get your service even cheaper. Okay, let's hear it. And Georgia, this is because Target, Kroger, and some of the other stores put the prepaid calling gift cards on sale. And you can buy those for up to half off if you play your cards right. Now this can require a bit of stacking for you to optimize and it can come with a pain of execution, but I've literally done it on the renewals for my plan and I'm down to around 200 bucks a year for cell phone coverage. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So if you go to Europe, you can add features like prepaid international, but that's just silly and expensive from your USA carriers. Plus it's also slow to use, right? It goes through the USA gateways. Yeah. Want a trick yeah. there? Yeah. All right, well today's smartphones have a secondary SIM or phone number capability. So you can leverage that. And what I mean is, when I went to Greece with my buddies at the end of the last summer, I went to the website of a local Greek cellular provider. I downloaded a QR code for an eSIM, that's an electronic version of a phone number, and it only cost me around 15 euros and gave me plenty of gigabytes to upload all of my FOMO pictures to Insta and keep tabs on my friends with iMessage. Oh, and best of all, you got to use Google Maps in Europe because who can read those street signs anyway? Right, but listen, when I go to Europe, whenever I travel somewhere, I got to wait till I get back. So I don't even get to sit to post my pictures because it's so god dang expensive. And slow because it's you're going through the... slow. Right. That's okay. why doing the eSIM is amazing. So I've had international roaming on my old cellular service where it was all included, but it was always so slow and it yes. would freeze up the device on photo uploads because of the data going through slow international gateways. Oh, so annoying. But by purchasing a local SIM, you're at full speed and at a third of the cost. Okay. So hopefully this will get you thinking about traveling again and show you a way to save some money before that next trip. Hey, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about moving to this type of plan and how it works out for you if you've done it. So I want to do it, but I feel like I'm finding something out about you. You're like the millionaire next door. 
Ooh, right? I like that. Tell, tell that theory. I like this. Or I know. Story. I'm just saying, you probably still, you, you like wash your floss and then you're that I guy. I don't wash no. my floss, but I do my own laundry. So everybody does their own laundry. That's no big deal. That's just not, but I'm just oh, saying. Wait, I thought you shipped it out to people. I, I thought you had the, the, the stork bus come to your house and come pull on, all your laundry. Come on. But I'm just saying, you're that guy. Like, who does that? You went got, to the Greek website. That's so, What? I would have never thought to do that. And I would have never thought to do that. So I, I got tired of paying AT&T when ridiculous. I'd go to Europe, like 300 bucks yeah. on my postpaid plan. The prepaid plan, it has data even cheaper in Europe, but then it goes through the slow gateway. So all of this was just an effort for me to find out how to get faster internet when I was abroad. Yes. And back in the old days, I used to buy a SIM for like the United Kingdom that would let me roam through 17 different countries. And that was like 20 pounds. That was kind of expensive compared to 15 euros for the eSIM. So the whole market's changed now with cellular. And in fact, in America, we're paying five, six times more per month for cellular plans. My expat from Europe friends that leave Europe to come over to America, they can't believe what it costs for cellular coverage here. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let me know how it works out for you in the comments below. Okay, this is fun. I know a lot of y'all had never even heard of Snoop Dogg unless you watched Martha, as in Stewart, and Snoop's oh, potluck, as in that. weed, dinner party. Now, many of you saw Snoop perform for the first time at the halftime show. I, for one, am a fan. I've even met Snoop several times. He's even liked one of my social media posts. That's so cool. What? And in a world where everybody wants to look and even be, yeah, everybody else, Snoop is unapologetically Snoop. So that's why I'm excited about this story. So Snoop acquired Death Row Records, right? You know, Dr. Dre or Beats. Some of y'all only know Beats. The guy who came up with those really expensive headphones that your kids wear. Yeah, or use MC Hammer. You might know MC Hammer. Tupac. If you don't know who Tupac is, I, I just can't explain who Tupac is. So we just have to stop listening. Um, so here's the story. Last year, Snoop collected millions of dollars worth of NFTs, like $17 million worth under an, uh, under an alias, Cosimo de Medici. I know you'll know this. This is, is interesting that? because Cosimo de Medici was a banker during the Renaissance, right? Ah. He used his money and also his influence to invest in Florence and was an amazing patron of the arts, literature, et cetera, et cetera. So if you've ever been to Florence, which I know you have, one of the places you probably visited was the Palazzo Medici. Ah. And the Medici family supported the greats like Michelangelo. I know you know them, Leonardo, Da Vinci, and So they were benefactors. Yes. So the list goes on, but the Medici family also supported science. So I'll bet this is how, why, how Snoop sees this. Okay, so you think about the Medici family in Florence, okay? So they did for Florence kind of what Death Row Records did for West Coast Hip Hop. That's I know deep. it's a stretch. That's deep. He was, it's a he stretch. Was, he just bought it because he was high. Probably, <laughs> probably. Okay, so I told y'all a while back that Snoop had released his album as an NFT. Actually, Snoop released 25,000 NFT stash boxes. Hey, Georgia, of what's, album. what's a stash box? I don't know. You put even, your weed, Georgia. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know. I got kids. I don't know. Uh, so they were $5,000 each. He sold over $40 million worth. And now he says he's putting out other artists through the metaverse. Snoop says Death Row Records is going to be the first NFT record label. So there. You got a lesson in hip hop and the Renaissance. You're welcome. But here's the thing. I don't need an NFT album. I can just say, Alexa, play Prince whenever I want. As I said, I like Snoop. And I don't want to sound like, you know, some 80-year-old woman still using a CD player or doing my phone like my mom does. She's like, how do I get this? Um, anyway, I just want to know what is the investment value in spending $5,000 on an NFT album? Georgia, so, hold on. What? This, I never have gotten Alexa to play Prince because I keep saying the symbol. Oh, my gosh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know that, yeah. Prince in the 2000s changed his name to a symbol. Yes, yes. It's a great story. <laughs> so I just don't know. Is an NFT, I mean, $5,000... I mean, it's cool. Look at this. But I'm just, I mean, I'm kind of a fan, but I'm not doing that. What are you going to do with it? Amazing. We don't need it for music, do we? Well, going back in the 2000s when Public Enemy released their first direct-to-consumer CD, I was one of the early buyers of it, and I got autographed by Flav and by the... That's yeah, so, cool. so I've got this. And I think it was like, I don't know, $12. But back then... The artists were probably only making three dollars per CD. Right. So the fact that they got all twelve dollars of it yeah. or nineteen or whatever it was, that was a real boon to them. 
But the fact that he made forty million dollars blows my mind. And we just have to hope that with this one, it's not a rug pull. Do you know what those are? What? A rug pull is when an artist or a basketball player, and this just happened recently, a basketball player sold one point seven five million dollars worth of NFTs and then took the money and ran. That's what the rug pull is. They got no value out of the NFTs because the product essentially dried up. So that's why these NFTs that have services around it or parties around it like Board Ape Yacht Club are going to be beneficial. Now, Snoop knows how to throw a party. We know that. And yeah. Martha knows how to cater it. So <laughs> we can only hope that some of those people that spent that total of $40 million for his NFT get to party with Martha and Snoop. That would, cool would be hot. That would be hot. Greg, really quickly, because um, I know we're, we're, we're out of time here, but do, is, do you see any value in spending 5000 bucks on an NFT uh, stash box album? See any value in that? I'm, if you can get it for five thousand dollars, but the thing is, is I believe they had a lot of them available and they didn't sell out. Yeah, That's they didn't. The problem that I have is, if they were five thousand dollars and they didn't sell out, um, where's that market? That market might not be this year or next year. It could be, you know, decades from now. Uh, but even at $44 million, great job, Snoop. You made more money off of that than you probably did selling your records and music. And now, I'm not talking about all the other stuff he's done, but probably just the records. Like he said, you don't make a lot. They don't make a lot off the records. So, you know. Well, now he owns the, the record company, so which there's actually some some so cool. some yeah. discrepancy because Dr. Dre's people are like, you don't own the chronic. And he's like, yes, I do. So it's, it's very interesting. Wow. But So this go. is a perfect question for Greg because it's all about scarcity. And Greg, I see some scarcity on the wall right beside you. Oh, are you talking about these little things? Yeah. Talk about some the scarcity there. Lot. Some of them aren't. Uh, like, that's evolution. That's worth 400 bucks. And tell people uh, what it is for those of us right watching at home or those of us old. listening. It's seven years old. It's worth about eight hundred dollars. And what what are you holding up? It's a uh, generations. It was the twentieth anniversary this year. What is it though? Twentieth anniversary. Pokemon what had the twenty fifth year anniversary, and that was just an elite trainer box. That one's worth about eight hundred dollars, seven hundred. But what's inside of the box, Greg? About, Get to the. I'm from Missouri, the Show Me State, and I know you can't open it because once you break the seal. Yeah, it's just Pokemon cards and stuff. Cards, there. cards. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It blows my mind how much money you're making trading those. So, hey, Greg, thanks for joining us today on uh, What's Next Wall Street. Greg Krause is the lead instructor at Options Players and gives us the tips that we need to know about every week. Yes. Remember, if you've got questions, we can try to help you answer them. And we usually go through a wormhole. We just get off on some other tangent, but we'd love to hear from you. So email us at www.optionsplayers.com. Hit us up on social media, what's next Wall Street, comment, all that good stuff. You can, of course, watch episodes of Greg holding up his Pokemon things <laughs> on the Options Players YouTube page or listen on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast. And make sure you subscribe and hit the alert button and We'll let you know when current episodes drop. Yes. I'm Dave Matthews. And I'm George Alfredes. See you next time on What's Next Wall Street.